What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome to the kickoff, the start of our 2024 Holiday Buyer's Guide series. We got a whole bunch of cool videos for you. This is the one of the most requested video series of the entire year and to kick it off today, we're talking everything bait casting reels. We are so excited to get this series kicked off. Now, you will notice that today, our first video of the year, we're only talking about reels. Traditionally, our first video of the reel, the first video of the, the series is a rod and reel combo video. We try to coordinate these videos with the Tackle Warehouse sales to help you guys maximize your savings. This year, Tackle Warehouse, instead of doing just a Black Friday sale, some of you probably already know this, they're doing an entire series of fall sales. So we have changed the order of events in order to help you guys where those videos will land during the various sales. So we're actually going to end this series with the rod and reel combos closer to Christmas. We're starting out with reels, swim baits, they're going to be on sale, storage, then we'll take a little break in there. You'll think it's over, it's not over, we are just getting started. Then we start hitting all the different bait videos and end with those rod and reel combo videos for you. We are so excited to get this series kicked off. Why don't you start us? Yeah, it's, um, it's always fun. This is, like I said in the intro, this is one of our most requested video series of the entire year. You guys love these videos. We love doing it. We're, we're tackle junkies. As you can see, we <laughs> have a spread <laughs> of reels. And uh, I mean, it's there's some, there's some systematic, I mean, there's some system to it. Like we have budget reels, we have kind of the workhorse reels, then we have some high-end stuff from different brands, and then we have some BFS stuff. So we're gonna try and cover as much as we can for you uh, and, and give you some information so you can go make the purchases or have loved ones make the purchases for you for the holiday season. So you wanna, I guess we'll kick it off with budget. Hand me a couple of those, let's do it. If you guys aren't familiar with how this works, as we talk about these reels in the video description below the video, whether you're watching this on YouTube, on tacticalbassin.com, on Facebook, it doesn't matter where you see it. Below the video, there are links. You might have to click the three little dots. You might have to click more, scroll down, click more again. It depends on the platform. But below everywhere you can see this video, there are links to the different products on Tackle Warehouse in the order that we talked about them to make it as simple as possible for you. We'll break them down by categories to help you connect what we're talking Talking about to that specific item so you're not lost or your loved ones aren't lost as they're trying to find them all right so i'll kick it off i'll give you these two so basically we fish a lot of stuff we fish a lot of different brands we try basically about you know, try about everything everything um we spend a lot of a lot of money on this stuff but <laughs> We recommended things that we have had success with, we have confidence in. So to kick it off, we're talking about budget casting reels, bait casting reels under $100. This one comes in at $69.99, I believe. This is the Daiwa CC80. This is a reel that we've had for several years now. No issues, really smooth. It's going to last. You know, when you start spending a little bit more money on your reels, they're going to last a lot longer. And that's what's really key about these three budget reels that we picked. But that mm -hmm. Daiwa CC80, it's a great top water reel, power fishing reel. You can throw light baits on it. It's just a universal great reel bait casting reel it doesn't break the bank so i really like it uh like i said we've i think we fished this now two and a half maybe three maybe years, three years no issues whatsoever it's uh if it's really good in the hands a little bit smaller profile reel but that is a winner right there it's amazing it was not very long ago that we would not come under the hundred dollar mark for a reel and the reason why was brands used to put all their attention hundred dollars and up and the stuff below that just wouldn't last. It might feel good on the shelf, but it would break down. That has changed. The brands have really focused attention industry wide on that, you know, 50 to hundred dollar reel as well. And that's why we've got three reels in that category today. It's great to see that changing. And since it is changing, we have poured our own attention and time and money into trying all the reels at that price point as well. Two more for you. These are a little bit more. You're talking, uh, I believe 89, give or take. Of course, that's before a sale, but 
little bit more than the CC80. We've got the Shimano KS. The Shimano KS, again, the word is workhorse. Uh, I have done my best to destroy these things and they just stay smooth. The KS is a lightweight reel. It's extremely reliable. Uh, I personally prefer the HG, that's the high gear, the seven to one. That just, the KS in a seven to one is just a reel that can literally do everything. Uh, and you're doing it affordably. Uh, it's really amazing how far things have come. Now on this reel, your adjustments are internal. Side plate comes off and you've got your adjustments inside. On this next one, the Abu Garcia Max Pro, same price point, super smooth reel. I mean, crazy smooth reel. Uh, your adjustment is on the outside uh, just an added feature there. Uh, very reliable reel. I've had no issues out of it so far. I have not fished this one as long. I have not had the depth of time. I mean, the KS I have tried to kill, right? Yeah. Same with the CC80. We've tried to kill those reels and they've stood the test of time. The Max Pro is a newer reel. When it's, when it's new, it feels fantastic. A year or two from now, we'll have that long-term answer. It, it literally takes time to get there, but it is a great reel, um, super smooth, super comfortable. And it's amazing that we've got three great options at that sub-100 sub, yeah. price point. Yeah, and getting back to that CC80, it does have the side plate adjustment, so mm -hmm. external braking system, which is nice. You at can adjust, 69 bucks. Yeah, you can adjust on the fly. All right, next up, what do we want to call This is like your 100 to 120 dollar yeah, something like that price range uh, i'm gonna kick it off right here this is the 13 fishing modus c2 out of nice. all of these this is the power fishing reel lots of drag this has don't quote me on the it's poundage 18. It's, i know okay, what it is yeah. 18 pounds of drag so if you're a guy that's looking for a hundred dollar price point reel that loves frogging loves punching loves power fishing flipping right this is the reel. Super smooth. You can see it's spooled up with straight braid. This is our budget power fishing reel. Let me get a couple more of those. Let me get that one. Maybe skip one. Give me that speed spool there. Yeah. We'll go back and forth here. This is the Shimano SLXA. I would say of all of the budget reels, this is our main bread and butter reel. You know, right at that $100 mark, this thing pairs well to everything. It's a do-it-all, phenomenal, phenomenal reel. The SLX 150 was a fantastic reel. This year it got an update to the SLXA. What they did is they added another feature to it and didn't even increase the, the SLXA, or the SLX was already a killer. Right. They added another feature, didn't charge any more money. I mean, it's a, it is a no-brainer at a hundred bucks. That is my main budget reel that I run on the bulk of my budget stuff. Yeah, mine too. I have probably four or five of them and that's that's the one that my kids are always grabbing. It just that's gets it I, done. Yeah. All right, next up for this guy is gonna, next up for the budget reels, gonna be the Daiwa Fuego. This is the, the CT100, so 100 size reel. And Daiwa, Shimano, great products, right? They have their own factories. Their quality control is, is awesome. You don't have to worry about some yep. of the other things you would with some of the other the other brands. But the Fuego, again, has that external uh, braking system, really fine-tuned. So this is another workhorse reel. I know that Matt's already talked about or said workhorse, but this is a workhorse as well. So if you're a guy, and, and let's be honest, there are Daiwa guys, there are Shimano there guys. Are. No there are. No air guys. If you like that Daiwa feel, that kind of free-floating feel, this is a great reel. You know, if I can add to that one too, like that is a workhorse, but I've noticed the other end of the spectrum with that reel too. It will send a light bait really, really well. I've been impressed. I've got a Fuego on one of my cranking setups and I can throw really small square bells on that thing. I've been really shocked at its adjustability. Yeah, yeah the, the adjustability is is a great a great way to describe it. The, out, the external braking system, I mean, it goes from zero all the way up to think 20 yeah. right so really fine tune your external braking system for changing between the different weights of baits yeah that brings us to the lose speed spool lfs this thing has been a bestseller forever 
Uh, since it came out, this thing has been a hot ticket item. It is a very consistent reel. It does a fantastic job. Again, external braking. Uh, it's a very lightweight reel. Uh, and it's just solid. Again, it's a reel that we've put through the paces and it just has not broken down over time whatsoever. I've been very impressed. Again, Tim just touched on that external braking system, but here's one thing I want to add to that. There are a lot of cheap reels on the market. I didn't say budget, I said cheap. There's a lot of cheap reels out there. They'll have components like that, but the function's not there. Like you, when we're testing, we show you the things we like. We don't talk about the things that we've tested and don't like. And I think sometimes there's this misconception that, because guys are like, try this one, try this one, try and We're like, we have tried, tried those. Man. Tried it. We yeah. have. Uh, there's a lot of things that sound good and then the function isn't really there. Like you're turning that dial back and forth and you're making the cast and it's really not making a significant difference or they don't hold up over time. There's reasons that get things eliminated. Uh, these are reels that do a fantastic job. And again, that speed spool LFS is another one that has just stood up. It's taken the beating. It's done a great job. I'm going to go ahead and hand you this one too, because you just covered this reel in, yeah, a, yeah. in a review. This is seven. So this is a new company. Uh, but it is in the St. Croix family. This is the uh, 7GF. This is their first ever entry into reels, into the casting category of reels specifically. Uh, I think you're right around 120 bucks if I remember right, but a very smooth reel. Uh, as, as a company entering in, I think they did a fantastic job. It has remained very durable. The drag has remained solid as I've fished it. Um, carbon fiber handle, uh, adjustability on the outside. And again, the big thing that stood out to me with this reel was that adjustability. Uh, when I first took it out of the package and I went to make some casts with it, I started to backlash. I adjusted it, went to cast again, started to backlash again. I thought, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> I made the next click, dialed it in. Next click, we're golden. The adjustment is actually there. It's functional. And from then on, I was throwing, a, it was a Kitek is what I was throwing on it. And I could send it. I was amazed how far on a budget reel, how far I could send that thing. It was very, very consistent, solid drag, and it has just continued to hold up. No issues whatsoever out of that reel. I've been really impressed. Again, I'm impressed by the entire budget friendly category, if you will. They have just, the entire category has moved up and up and up in recent years. It's shocking. Yeah, it's all these companies are trying to get competitive at those lower price points. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about, I think you hit the nail on the head, you know, adjustability on these reels with these external side plates, you know, cheap versus quality. A lot of them, if you just turn those adjustments, it doesn't really do anything. Yep. Whereas, you know, some of these reels we're talking about, all these reels we're talking about, uh, you make those adjustments and it actually works. You know, a lot of things are advertised. Sometimes they don't, they don't work as advertised. Right. Let me take this next set if you don't mind. Go for it. Let's, uh, we're going to jump now into a, a, some of the actual brands. Uh, it, Tim hit it on the head, right? There's Shimano guys. There's Daiwa guys. There's 13 guys. There's Lose guys. So we wanted to, in some of these higher price points, speak to the brand, to the category. We'd move across some of these brands, then we'll end it with BFS and some of the other things that will benefit you with your casting gear. So on the Shimano side, we separated, you guys know, we are Shimano fanatics. I in particular am a Shimano fanatic, always have been, I love them. Uh, we tried to separate these into two categories, right? So you've got your smaller frames, like your 50 and 70 size frames, and then your full size frames, so either 150 or 200, uh, in order to put a little, a bit of understanding between them. Because you can get lost in this whole pile of reels, right? If there's not some sort of breakdown between them. So the reason for a 50 to 70 size reel is more of those finesse applications or you're just trying to downsize. There's a lot of times you don't need tons and tons of line, especially, so finesse fishing, right? Throwing a micro jig, 
uh, your drop shotting on that thing. Small cranks. Small cranks. But when you get into like the small crank or the top water, it's not that you don't need line, but you're going to such thin line, especially if you go to braid, that even a 70 size reel holds a ton. ton of line. You just don't need more. So it's not always finesse. Sometimes it's power fishing with lighter line. So within the family of reels, uh, there are three standouts in those smaller framed reels. The first one is the Aldebaran. Uh, the Aldebaran is an unbelievable reel. It it definitely altered the way I fished. Do you remember when I would do all my cranking on an Aldebaran and you would just shake your head at me? It was when we were on clear, like speed cranking in the winter. I started out doing it on an Aldebaran because it was so light, I wouldn't give the thing up. And I could send baits into the wind. I do not recommend that. Let me, let me just, <laughs> you're going to destroy your reels. I tore some reels up, but I liked them that much. The Aldebaran is the pinnacle in Shimano's line of that finesse power fishing. Is that a fair, can I use that phrase? Fin yeah, finesse fishing. It, it truly is. It is a remarkable, crazy lightweight reel. You pair this up to a high-end rod, it's an unbelievable combo. But you pair it up to an X-Pride, right? The the reel or the rod is only half the price of the reel, but it takes that whole combo just off the charts. Uh, just truly an amazing reel. Coming down from there, the next one that hits super hard is the Corrado 70. The Corrado 70, you're talking about an MGL spool. And in Shimano's line, anything with an MGL spool is mind boggling. They can send it. I don't care what the price point is. High end, budget, doesn't matter. If there's an MGL spool in there, you're going to be shocked you, by the actual fish ability. Yeah, you'll feel the difference. You'll see the difference on your cast ability. It's amazing. The Corrado 70 is that true middle of the line workhorse. If a guy wants to experience an MGL, he wants a super solid combo that'll go for years, that's the one. But I could not do this without talking about the little SLX 70 MGL. The SLX is more of that budget category, right? We just talked about the SLXA. The SLX 70 MGL, again, that MGL spool is one of those reels. It's like when we discovered X Pride and you're like, this rod hits so far outside of its price point, it's crazy. <laughs> the SLX 70 MGL casts so far out of its price point, it's crazy. It will send a bait. We were recently doing a video throwing lipless baits. And if you guys watch that video, you might have noticed we started out, we were like sitting in the middle of a lake thrown to the bait. It's so far away. These reels will send it like a bullet. It's, it's amazing. If it's a little bit of a price jump for you, but you're considering going from a budget reel up another 40, 50 bucks to get into an MGL spool, if, it's, if you can do it, do it. The difference is shocking. If you can't do it, don't. We never encourage somebody to blow their budget, right? Don't do that. But if it's in your budget, the jump is remarkable. Yeah, that little, I mean, all these reels are are off the charts good. They're so good. Uh, but that, that MGL, that 70, uh, the other day we were fishing. And the reason that we're casting so far, you're like, why do I need to cast that far? We were fishing a back of a cove where the fish were super shallow. And we don't want to get the boat up there and spook them off. So we're yep. launching these baits. And I'm throwing the I'm throwing the metanium. And I'm I'm looking over at Matt like, what, what reel is that? It's, it's, <laughs> Uh, it was he was sending them but uh all right so that's the kind of that finesse 70 i love that 70 size it just fits really well in the hand yeah. uh those of you guys that like you know throwing like a power shot or a shaky head on a bait caster like almost power f fishing like finesse baits put them all on a little 70 size bait caster is money all right so let's talk about the 150 size so a little bit bigger frame uh i'm gonna start with the high end, uh, the metanium, the MGL. So this, these all have MGL two spools in it. This has an MGL three spool in it. This is my, I can't speak for you. This is my yeah, you bread, can. my I bread know what and butter. You're say. This is I the mean, deal. The, the majority of my combos have this reel. I throw the HG. I do have some in the XG, the eight to one gear ratio reels. Uh, but the HG, that seven to one, it's just a workhorse. It casts a country mile. We haven't had any issues. It's just buttery smooth. To me, no matter what the price point, this is the kind of the 
the staple that I kind of base everything off of. You're gauging all your other reels according to where according they stand to, to that. Right? Um, it is an awesome, awesome reel. Little step down, still an awesome, awesome reel is the a Corrado 150 MGL. Again, Matt talked about that Magnum light spool, that that buttery smooth that it you could just cast so much farther. Yep. Um, and it's, it's just, there's no resistance to the handle. So that 150 Corrado. So drop down in price point, but you're still getting a high, I mean, a high end reel and been really, really uh, impressed with that Corrado 150 MGL. Uh, you noticed that we didn't really talk about the Corrado. Um, the new one? The new the one. That is a glaring, a glaring missing spot here is the yeah. new Corrado M. And we already did a review on it. Right. But it takes time to check all the longevity of them. Just exactly. to beat them to death. Because it, the new Corrado M has an MGL3 spool in it. Right. It's bad. Uh, and we are, it, and it's been really good. So, I mean, we gave it a great first look review, but we're continuing to beat that reel to death. That just takes time. Yeah. But that 150, if you're looking to jump up in size from like a 70 size to a 150, maybe you are cranking, throwing your, your 6XD or your tactical crank, whatever it may be, that yeah. midsize crank, and you need that more line capacity, you need that bigger spool. Those reels are great. Jump over here. Yeah, why don't you do the high end first? Let's do the like same thing. Let's do little guys and then like larger frames. Okay. Um, I don't even know where to start with this guy. This is the Daiwa Steez CT SV TW T Wing System. <laughs> this reel is probably the most expensive reel in this entire lineup. It um, definitely is. I own two of them. Good I Lord. bought one and I loved it so much, I bought two. I got two of them. Um, I use this reel specifically for throwing top water. <laughs> this is the reel, and when you see me when I'm spot fishing and they start blowing up and I pick up my top water and I launch my shower blows or whatever, and I launch that top water like a long ways, it's this reel. This thing is so dialed and it's light. It wouldn't be a normal power fishing reel for me, it, just looking at it, but it has, I mean, this is the exact reel I've used for the last two or three years. Like I haven't, I've only re-spooled it twice. I just, it's just dialed. I don't want to mess with it because I can send those baits so far. I don't backlash. It is super light. Like I said, it's, it's, it, it's high end. It's, it's, it's up there in price point. But if you're looking for a reel that works, that, that feels light, that's buttery smooth, that lasts several years without having to change bearings or do any maintenance on it. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about it. The only downside is the price point, right? It is it is up there. I think it's sub or just above seven hundred dollars. So, Oof. yeah, it hurt a little bit, but <laughs> which time? I know <laughs> that, that that proves my point, though. Yes, it, it does. is that good of a reel. So if you're a guy that has one high-end combo and you're looking for a little smaller size you're looking for castability um don't be afraid to try this thing this thing is money now we get a lot of questions because there's one thing i've noticed through the years is when we talk about all the price points high-end guys are never upset when we include budget gear but sometimes when we when we do it all there are guys that are offended that we talk about high-end gear. Right. I don't know what that is, but we truly try it all. One thing that we get asked a lot is, is it worth the money? Whatever the, whatever the discussion is, is it worth spending to upgrade? Tim just touched on one of the value points of a high-end reel. If you're going to buy a $100 reel or a $50 reel, and you're going to buy a $400 or $500 or $700 reel, that more expensive reel has to last longer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're insane, right? They tangibly last longer. And that's one of the things that we're looking for. So when you go into a high-end reel, there's a few different things that you're going to gain. One is typically a weight reduction. Not always, if they're trying to build one that's truly bulletproof, there may not be weight reduction. But typically there's going to be weight reduction. They're going to get unbelievably smooth. So what you'll notice when you start playing with high-end reels is that you don't notice them. You will notice in a more budget type reel, the grind 
in the reel as you're turning that handle, right? You'll start to notice yeah. things about it. In a high-end reel, if it's done right, you just cease to be aware that there is a reel in your hand. You are just one with it and you are just fishing. And then the last thing is that longevity. It may sound crazy to spend three, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks on a reel, but when that reel has outlasted three or four of your budget yeah. reels, it's same money, right. right? And you adjusted it once you got it all set up and you're dialed for an extended period of time. There are tangible advantages to high-end reels for someone who can afford to take that leap. And I fully understand. Like I felt bad when I just, I mean, I feel bad when I mentioned the price point of this because we it's a high-end reel. I mean, we. Yes. So do not break the budget. You don't need this reel if you don't have the money. Let me be clear on that. Right. Matt and I are never like, you have to buy this. Right. Buy what you can afford. Some of those are awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome at their price points. And that's why we right. spend the time getting to know them. Because there are reels in that category that are not worth it. There are some reels that are totally worth it. All right. Let's carry on here. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing down the line of Daiwa reels. The next one, staying in that finesse. So that is the heavy hitter in that size class. The other one for me in that 70 size that has hit really hard is the Tatula SV TW70. <laughs> uh, phenomenal little reel. Now, we had a lot of questions when we started hammering the BFS category. A lot of people uh, were asking about this reel because Daiwa in the US market didn't have a BFS reel in the category. In other markets, they absolutely right. do. They've got some fantastic reels, but they just weren't in the US market. Uh, so people were asking about this reel. So I went back and took a much more thorough look at it. And what I will say is that in my mind, it is still, it's not a BFS reel. I don't think it was ever intended to be a BFS reel. But with that said, it is an amazing finesse reel. It throws mid to light baits so well. It is incredibly smooth. Uh, I refuse to touch that reel because I don't want to buy one and I'm very happy here, right? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm trying to stay in my lane here. But seriously, at its price point, uh, that Tatula SVTW70 is a fantastic light bait finesse style bait caster. I mean, I have this one spooled with eight pound fluoro. It, it's a finesse reel. It can handle bigger stuff, right? You can put 30 or 40 pound braid on it to do other things. But I really wanted to check the low end of this reel and pour some real time into it. And I did that and I've been very impressed. I don't think that it was ever designed to be a BFS reel. I think Daiwa makes amazing BFS reels and I hope they enter the US market soon. But this is a fantastic finesse reel. Yeah, and you we keep saying finesse reel. You know, a reel like this, we say finesse, but you could throw small cranks on it, jerk baits, small top waters. You can use it for other things. Absolutely. You I, drop shot on it. Yeah, I think we just keep saying head. finesse because they're they're small in the hand. You can throw the lighter baits. They are buttery smooth. So that's what we mean by the finesse size reels or finesse reels. And they've got finessey drags in them. Like you can yeah. put eight pound on this, hook a big fish, and you're not going to end up in that zzz, 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 pop. Yeah. Right, They'll, they've got smooth. buttery smooth drags that can handle light line and and actually play that out for you. All right, next up, we're jumping up in size of the reels. This is the Daiwa Zillion SVTW. Now I keep saying TW. That's the T wing. That's their line guide system. When you hit that that uh, spool release, that that T wing drops down and opens up. It's supposedly uh, gets you more let, distance. Yeah, gets more less line going through the little hole right on your line guide. Gives you more distance in casting. So um, that's what the TW stands for. Uh, this is that zillion, and I think this came out last year, and we had a ton of comments of guys raving about this reel. So we went out and picked up a couple, and I will say it is awesome. I actually have this spooled with 50 pound braid, and I've been uh, finesse frogging. This is what I've been throwing my little Kara on, nice. and it. It, I've hooked some fish. It has a great drag, a uh, lot of distance on the uh, on the cast. It is comparable, comparable to that Metanium MGL. So that's kind of the one-two punch right there. I've been really, really happy with this guy. I haven't done a lot of straight fluoro like I have with this. I mean, we've cr speed cranked. We've done mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff on. Uh, I mainly, mainly power fished with this thing out here last 
last fall uh, throwing hair jigs, flutter spoons, and now frogging on it. And I've been highly impressed with this guy right here. Again, longevity. And and yes, they are higher in the, in, you know, they, they cost more money, but you're not having to buy one, two, three more reels in the lifespan of a good quality reel. So mm -hmm. that guy right there is awesome. All right, one more Daiwa for you. Again, we were looking for those reels that just stood out from the crowd. The last one, and this is another one that we reviewed earlier in the year, this is the Tatula 100. They came out with a new Tatula 100. Uh, biggest thing here, graphic changes, you know, some of the things that don't matter, but the biggest thing here is that they added hyperdrive down into that Tatula 100, which is giving you uh, a stronger, more connected feel in your gearing. Uh, significant difference. I mean, something that you can actually notice. A lot of changes, especially with high-end stuff, there'll be all these like buzzwords, but you're like, I don't know what, what that mean? is. Yeah. What does that one do? That hyperdrive is one of those things that you're aware of. It is a significant change in the reel. And again, that 100 size, it's not a true full-size reel, but it's not a little finesse bait caster either. It's a great mid-size reel, just like with Shimano, we've moved a lot of our stuff to like 150 size reels. With Daiwa, I've moved a lot of things to a 100 size reel. Uh, it's just very, very comfortable for all around fishing. All right, next up we have 13. Which one do you want to do? I'll go first. Awesome. Let me do this one. Okay. All right, so with 13, this is another brand that has just exploded on the reel. Well, rods and reels, frankly, but they make such solid reels. Uh, and it takes a lot to play in the real game. There are a lot of brands that come in. I mean, 13 have been here, yeah. you know, I don't know, 10 years, maybe longer now. It's Time flies. Yep. I don't know how long they've been here. But I remember when 13 came in and you're like, oh, here comes another brand that's going to try. But they were serious. Uh, they have done some really amazing things through the years. They've built some very, very solid reels. They're constantly taking it to the next level. We're seeing that now with their some of their spinning reels. We'll get to that actually in the next video. We'll cover spinning reels. Uh, but today, the one I want to talk about is the Concept C2. And for those of you that have been through the buyer's guides or just watch our fishing videos, it should be no surprise that I want to talk about this reel. Full-size frame, super comfortable, great fishing reel, tons of adjustment. The big thing I want to talk about here is weight and weight reduction. The Concept C2 is a lightweight reel at an affordable price. I mean, you're, you're in the 200s. It's not a budget reel, okay? But it is lightweight like some of the super high-end reels. And you're doing it for almost half the money. If a guy wants to experience a super light reel that will balance out a lightweight rod. So sometimes a guy will buy a super light rod and then you pair it to an existing reel and it just sort of deadens it out because it's a heavy reel, right? You don't have a ton of extra money. You're not throwing four or 500 bucks at a super light reel to put on that rod. A Concept C2 is such a workhorse reel. I've got concepts that I've thrown four or five years that are still going strong. Uh, it's amazing how well they have held up over time. I've been so impressed by the 13 reels in general. Uh, and this one in particular, Crazy Light, is an unbelievable value for a guy who wants to try a lightweight reel to take a combo to the next level. You just, you can't do it at a more affordable price. Yeah, having that lightweight, it's just, it's hard to explain, right, until you put it on a rod and you hold it in your hand. You're like, oh, oh, wow. You know, yep. we've all been there where we've had a super light rod and then we put a, a reel on there and it just kind of feels funky. It doesn't balance right, kind of feels heavy in the hand. That thing is awesome. It, again, it doesn't break the bank to get that lighter price. I think it's like, what, five ounces or something? It's it's, it's down light, there. man. It's uh, light. You know, Matt's been raving about it for a couple of years. I picked up some last year. I've been throwing jerk baits on it, throwing lipless cranks on it, throwing blade baits on it, uh, on them. I have, like I said, a few of them highly impressed if you're a guy that doesn't need the lightweight and you're looking for a good jig uh, reel a good do everything reel the concept a2 a little bit larger profile a little bit heavier but it's the workhorse mm -hmm. uh you know it's kind of got cork handles i love this reel i was throwing this again time flies you've been throwing it for a long a time. long time this was you the... picked that one up before i picked that one up 
I, I can't even remember when I, I got to try it out, but I was I, I remember I was throwing straight four carbon, heavy finesse football jigs for big smallmouth, wintertime fishing, and I was casting uh, this thing, long castability. I, this is the same reel that I've had spooled up. I've, I've frog fished with it. I've flutter spoon fished with it. It is just a workhorse. So if there's concerns, you know, some of my concerns with 13 fishing, like Matt said, when they first came out, you don't know about longevity and, you know, dependability. Uh, these guys are great. That's all been answered. It's been answered. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they just, I don't know. They, they just do little things like this. Do you see that? On that one, you can't see it. It's there. See this little black piece right here? That's this little plastic insert in the reel so that you can take your hook and hook it to your reel and not scratch anything. Right. They just do little things that make sense yeah. all throughout their reels. Yeah, very, very impressed with the, with both of those 13 fishing reels. All right, one more from you. Change of brands one more time, and then we're going to talk BFS. Uh, so not brand specific, and then we'll get into just some of the the accessories and the things that you want along with your bait casting gear. The last one is from Luz. Again, we were looking for reels that stand out stand at out. their various price points. And this is one uh, that I've put some time into now. It's the KVD uh, Speed Spool LFS. And it's just, it's a step up from that famous Speed Spool LFS um, in every way. It just, smoother more consistent uh, again super adjustable it's a i don't fish it every day but it's one of those reels where i was like i'm gonna step out i'm gonna try another one because we go every few years we go through all the brands and just buy up new stuff and just try it just to see if there's been significant changes uh, it wasn't that long ago i mean we bought a mountain of lose and mm -hmm. just thrashed them on purpose i mean just tore them up just to see and uh it was time to do it again a, a year or two ago and i went through and bought a bunch more and this was one of them that i picked up and i was very very impressed by that reel for its price that ends the brand specific stuff let's let's talk bfs man bfs bait finesse system if you guys haven't heard about bfs you've probably been living under a rock yep, we've definitely. been raving about it for a long time now and this reel in particular this is the corrado bfs this is really what kind of catapulted bfs into the u.s market yeah bfs it's, wasn't new it's not new it's been in the japanese market for many 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 years this was kind of the the beginning of bfs in our u.s affordable uh, bfs yeah for sure. yeah in our u.s market this reel single-handedly took over my finesse fishing game. Like it almost eliminated my spinning reels because I can throw eight ounce swim baits on it. I can throw a drop shot on it. I can throw a hair jig on it. I can throw I can throw a spy bait. All of my favorite finesse fishing techniques I can do with this reel right here. Basically everything except for maybe skipping a Senko up under docks or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of your favorite finesse techniques you can do with a bait caster now. So if you're a guy that doesn't like throwing a spinning rod, flipping the bail, doing all that stuff, we can't recommend a BFS reel uh, enough. enough. It's, it's so much fun. It has a clicker drag system on there. When you're hooked, I mean, hopefully you've seen our videos this last last couple years really but this reel right here buttery smooth you can pair it with uh, straight fluorocarbon five six seven pound fluorocarbon you can flip and pitch with it you can throw five or six pound braid put a leader on there and throw a hair jig <laughs> to the guy who's never done it you sound so I, insane I, but he's I so spot on so I mean, spot on who doesn't want to take a spy bait and send it, I mean, basically spool your reel and then fish it like you do do your favorite other bait, you know, your yep. other favorite bait, bait casting reels. It is just the muscle memory, doing, being able to fish your finesse, your favorite finesse techniques with the same muscle memory as all your other bait casting reels. This thing has really changed the game. Now from there, that has opened up the category and we will have a BFS buyer's guide down the road. Again, we're gonna do a few videos for you. Then we're gonna take a little break so we can actually talk some more fall fishing, transition to winter, yep. get you going on some cold water baits. We, we have not 
like that we have to miss some of that in order to do the buyer's guide. So this new way that TW has broken up their sales is allowing us to get you some of that really important content in between. Then we'll dive back in. We'll cover a bunch more videos, including a dedicated BFS buyer's guides, the gear, the baits, all that stuff. But that Corrado BFS has broadened the entire category, right? The category of BFS has now exploded in the US. And with that growth, Shimano answered the call and they brought over from the JDM market, the Aldebaran BFS, which takes it to a whole nother level. Smoother, more castability, lighter, lighter weight. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If you are serious about BFS, you want to try high-end, right? There are brands making high-end BFS rods now. Uh, the pairing there is phenomenal. You want to get as light as you can get. You want to get that distance out of them. And I mean, we start talking about wanting to get light. I mean, we're talking about two gram baits, three gram baits, like crazy light stuff. US guys are like, how much is a gram again? Right? right? Like you've got to get used to that. Uh, it's really amazing. And then one more, you mind if I do this Go one too? It. All right, I'll give you this stuff. I will say the BFS thing, like Matt talked about, like we went to ICAST, this, we go to ICAST every year, but this last year, how many different companies brought out new BFS baits? Like that that category as a whole is exploding. It's exploding. So hopefully some of these other real manufacturers will kind of, you know, bring some of their stuff over to the US market as well, because there's some other really good ones. But as of now, these things, these they're great, and it's completely changed the, the finesse fishing game. Completely changed it. The last one is from Cast King. And the first time we put a Cast King reel into a video, we were both like, did that really happen? Right? Like we were Cast King, when it came on, we didn't take it seriously. I think most most serious anglers didn't take it seriously, but they really went after that BFS market. They've gone after, they're doing some very unique things now. But the one that, that talks to me or speaks to me is their BFS reels. They had a budget BFS reel. It, it's gone away and I don't know where it went. It's not like we have some inside line. I have no idea. It just disappeared one day. Hopefully that comes back again. Uh, but that's what got me interested in the category. Uh, but I finally bit the bullet. It took me a while to choke down buying a, a high-end cast king but i did it i wanted to see you've got to know right somebody has to try it this is the cast king kestrel it is their high-end bfs reel and and i'm gonna say flat out i have no complaints none i have been very impressed i have this thing paired up to such light braid i can't tell you if it's six pound or seven pound i don't remember it's crazy it's too light like it's ridiculous but the distance I get out of the Kestrel is very noticeable. I, this whole fall, I've been throwing micro topwaters on it, the little zip and ziggy. And then Mega Bass came out with their little BFS walking bait. Those two baits on this reel, I mean, they go so far. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really, really fun fishing. I've been very impressed with that reel as well. Uh, real quick, let's talk about some line because what good is a reel without line on it? So right. last year, I think Seaguar came out with the basics line. Yep. So there's so many different fluorocarbon lines out there. There's inexpensive or cheap and there's super expensive. They're crazy. Uh, super stiff. Two of our favorites, the Seaguar Basics. It doesn't break the bank, but it's a good quality fluorocarbon. doesn't have a lot of memory. Uh, we, it, it, I guess the selling point is that the price. It's budget. Right? It's yeah. budget. And then most of the time, if I'm straight fluorocarbon fishing, you know, for big small mouth, I'm in clear water, maybe I'm in a highland reservoir with, you know, tons of visibility. I'm going straight fluorocarbon. I'm not doing a braid to leader. I'm going with the, uh, the FC by uh, Sniper by uh, Sunline. This is my That's basically just day, in, day out, everyday use, right? So those are the two that we're going to recommend. And uh, as far as braided line, the Max Quattro. This is awesome line. The deal is it's just thinner than most other braids on the market. So the 65 in it is going to be like a like a like a 40 a or a 50 40 depending on the brand. 50 depending. Yeah, exactly. In other braided lines. So if you're a guy that likes to send a frog, uh, you know, that 65, you can get away with that higher pound test, but you don't you're not giving up the thickness or the diameter of the line. So that Max Quattro is awesome. And then if you're a guy that's looking for a smooth braid, uh, I've been super impressed by this uh, 131 by Suffix. 
it's available in like a six pound. This is available in a five. I don't quote me. I don't it. remember. But yes, so, so if you're a BFS guy, no, um, Max Quattro doesn't go that light. I think the regular does. does. Okay, the regular. Yeah, yeah, that's the okay. Um, I think this goes down to ten. I have, Something. Yeah, I have, I have that on some of my spin reels. But this is a smooth braid, so you don't have to worry about the uh, the abrasive kind of feel to it. So I'll, all my spy baits, my finesse BFS stuff is what I'm throwing uh, this 131. And it's been, it's been, I've been. That, that 70 that I was sending and hurting your feelings with the other day had 131 okay. on it. That smooth braid just casts far. It, it does. There is a significant difference. Yeah, it I, really is. I, I mean. I'm no scientist or anything, but it's just, you know, that a more abrasive braid, right? That's really good for grass fishing because it cuts through the grass. If you're like around, saw. yeah, it just cuts through. through. But in my mind, it kind of catches itself when you're casting, whereas the smooth braid just flies off that spool and just, I don't know, it's just fun to fish with. So that 131 is really, really good. And then the last thing I wanted to add, because we're talking about buying new reels, uh, in some cases, high-end reels, it's around the holidays. People want you know, small gifts, you also want to take care of your stuff. Uh, a good reel cover is a big deal. On the budget side, the Rod Glove neoprene covers, they just work. They're super budget friendly. You just put it over your reel, swing it around on the rod. They work on or off the rod and you're set. Neoprene covers are awesome and that is a super affordable cover for your reel. Little bit higher end are the skull caps. And I've been talking about the 13 fishing skull caps for years. These things are legit. Like when you were a kid, you know the little slap bracelets? <laughs> That's literally what this is. So it's a rubberized cover. So you take your it's reel. Like a coated rubber. Yes. Slide it over the side. Slap this one down. Slap this one around. And that reel's ready to rock. I'm a guy who thrashes my gear. I mean, to be honest, I, if you want to know if gear is going to survive... I'm the guy because I am brutal to my, it gets kicked around, thrown around. It's dirty. I leave it on the deck going down the road. I mean, I'm just rough on my gear, but that's how we find out what lasts and what doesn't. Uh, but even I, when it's time to travel, I am not about having two $400 reels grinding on each other, going down the road, just destroying themselves for no reason. I will not do it. And these are both, these came straight out of my lineup of what I use to protect my reels rolling down the road. It's a few extra bucks that will protect your investment and makes a big difference. Yeah, guys, with that said, I think that's, uh, we're gonna wrap this video up. We know there's a lot of items here. So like Matt said, down below in the video description, we'll link all the different categories, the different reels we talked about, the line and all that gear. Um, it's fun. You know, we try so much gear and uh, it's, we're definitely uh we're out of control man but it's yeah. fun it's I'm, fun i'm looking at these lineups of it's it is so much fun and and hopefully this information helps you guys uh pick the right gear for you because you know your work for your hard-earned money and we want you to be happy with your purchases so hopefully this uh, yep. gives you the confidence to try uh one of these reels or a few of these reels in the different uh, price points what do we got up next all right, from here, we are continuing to roll forward. We are just kicking off this buyer's guide series. So next up is going to be spinning reels. Then after that, we're gonna start transitioning into swim baits and we'll just go from there. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.